Hi, I'm Mark Galley. This is a root cause analysis case study for that uh, tragic New York City helicopter crash that happened on March 11th of 2018. Uh, this is one of those incidents where multiple factors come together to produce this tragedy. Any one of them on their own wouldn't have necessarily produced it, but all of them together. Um, so there's, there's a lot of information, more detailed file that we've got, but there's a, a National Transportation Safety Board preliminary report, and that's what we use to, uh, to put this together. So I'm gonna start this with, uh, with something pretty simple with just like a one why. So the safety goal is affected because there were five fatalities, and the fatalities were because the passengers um, drowned. And they, they drown because they are trapped inside the helicopter. Uh, upside down and the reason they're trapped is they're unable to exit because they're wearing fall protection harnesses like a construction worker would wear on a construction project and the reason they're wearing those is because the helicopter is a doors off flight uh, the passengers can sit on the uh, floor of the helicopter and their feet can hang out and they have an incredible view of the city so you can see how how uh, easy it is to explain, well, this incident happened because they're wearing fall protection harnesses, which is absolutely true. So those harnesses, which are a solution to prevent passengers from falling out of the helicopter, that solution creates unintended consequences. So a solution to prevent one problem inadvertently creates a completely different problem. So the solution to prevent the passengers from falling out is causally related to the passengers drowning because they can't escape. A seatbelt has one buckle release. The pilot is wearing a regular seatbelt and they're able to escape because he releases his seatbelt and is able to get out, but the passengers aren't. So that is, is typically called a 5Y. This is how we lay out a 5Y. Visually, we don't write it in sentences down the page and what people conventionally do, we, we lay it out visually is what we call a 5Y cause map. I'm gonna back up to even just this, this 4Y which says the passengers are wearing fall protection. I'm gonna break it into this parallel path because it says the passengers are trapped upside down in the helicopter because they're unable to exit the aircraft. This is an effect and this is a cause. And the reason the passengers are unable uh, to escape the aircraft is because they have the fall protection. They're trapped upside down in the water because the helicopter is upside down in the water. So when you ask, why are the passengers trapped upside down? It's because they're unable to exit and it's upside down. The point being is that if the helicopter was not inverted, if this didn't happen, you wouldn't have this effect. And if this one didn't happen, you wouldn't have this effect. This cause and this cause are both required to produce this effect. The reason that's important is because you only have to solve one of them. Only one of these causes needs to be controlled to prevent this issue. You can solve both if you want, but you only have to control one. This is an important part of root cause analysis. And our cause mapping method is, is really risk mitigation, understanding how to break a problem out to identify different solution options. So this 5Y goes into a 7Y, the reason the helicopter is inverted in the water, because the helicopter came down in the water. And it came down in the water because there's an engine failure. So now it's immediately at a, a 9Y. Uh, the helicopter is inverted in the water because it's not buoyant. Commercial planes are pressurized and they float. But in this case, this helicopter is not uh, pressurized. Um, and so it sinks in the water. So the FAA knows that. So if you fly passengers over water, you actually have to provide some kind of flotation system where the helicopter has to have a flotation system on the helicopter to keep it from sinking to the bottom. So the helicopter is inverted in the water because the helicopter rolled to one side because the, flates, the floats didn't inflate evenly. So the helicopter is inverted in the water because it came down in the water. It is not buoyant, is not pressurized, and the helicopter rolled to one side. These three causes were all required to produce this effect. It's just an important part of breaking a problem out to understand different options to mitigate risk. One of the reasons uh, the aircraft comes down in the river is because the pilot decides to move away from Manhattan, a very populated area, but in retrospect, there's an option to land the helicopter in Central Park or in another uh, open area of, of New York, if there is an open area. A helicopter can auto-rotate, meaning a helicopter without power to the engine can still land because the air now actually moves up through the rotor. The air turns the rotor when the helicopter is falling 
and it actually acts as a rotary parachute. So the FAA requires single-engine aircraft, single-engine helicopters to auto-rotate uh, to be able to land. So the helicopter can actually land uh, fairly smoothly without power to the engine, um, which is one of the causes of this issue that it comes down in the water. Now, why is there a loss of the engine? And it's because the fuel is cut off to the engine. So it's not so much that the engine failed, but you'd write a loss of function of the engine because the fuel is shut off to the engine because the passenger restraint hooked around the fuel control lever. So this fall protection restraint that inadvertently traps the passengers inside the helicopter is also causally related to shutting down the engine. So this is that unintended consequences that the solution to prevent passengers from falling out of the helicopter is causally related to shutting the engine off. It's also causally related to trapping the passengers inside the helicopter. So it's just highly unusual that a solution created two completely separate problems on this, this issue. Now, this, this 15Y shows the different areas where the harnesses, the loss of engine, the water landing, and the flotation system are all causally related, but this is where an analysis requires all of its causes. That's really what a root cause analysis is. And we show that on the PDF if you want to download it. It's just important to break a problem down into parts to identify different options on how to mitigate risk because you don't have to solve all these 15 causes, don't need 15 solutions. In this example, it's showing how people inadvertently will debate this issue and say, well, it happened because of the harnesses, which is true. And other people say, no, it happened because the flotation system didn't function properly, which is true. And other people say, no, it happened because they came down in the water, they should have come down in Central Park, which is true in retrospect. And other people say, no, it happened because of the loss of the engine. These four different statements are all true, but individually, they're not right. It takes all of them together to produce this issue, which is exactly what that Swiss cheese model says. And the pilot actually survives because they can release their seatbelt, so it's not a negative impact to the safety goal. It's actually a positive uh, impact. Um, this expands it from the preliminary report even into a 30Y, and we show those different areas. There is a, a timeline to this incident, so the chronology of an incident which is the, the sequence of events or the timeline, is very important information. It's a straight line, but it is not cause and effect. So when something happened is different than why it happened. But there's also some important background information that you can put into the timeline. There are three different incidents with this model of helicopter that involve passengers that affected the fuel flow to the engine. It happened in 1994 in Canada. It happened in 1998 in France, and it happened in 2008 in Alaska, where passengers with their bags inadvertently affected the fuel flow, either too much or too little, to the engine. There was another issue involving a pilot with the fuel controls in Florida, but this was known as a potential solution back several years ago, and even in 2007, there was an option to put a control guard in place, and that's the benefit of having some of these photographs. This is out of the original NTSB report, and I'll zoom in within this Excel file um, and show you the, the fuel control levers between the two seats. And then here you can see a plexiglass panel. This is a picture of the particular helicopter that's involved in the incident. You can see there's no plexiglass uh, guard, but this is what uh, ABC7 in New York reported is what that plastic guard looks like between the passenger seat and the pilot seat that prevents the passenger from inadvertently affecting these fuel control uh, levers. So all of these photos are, are, are kept inside of one file with the entire uh, analysis. So if you want to download a copy of this template that we use, you can, uh, you can, you can do that. There's a, the PDF is in the description of this video. It shows the five Ys and it shows the, uh, the 15 Y. Um, we have uh, other case studies on our website, and we present webinars uh, weekly, and you can certainly download a copy of that, that cause mapping template. Uh, when the NTSB complete investigation comes out, uh, we will map this in more detail and make that available, but hopefully you found this information beneficial for understanding how to mitigate risk within your operations.